In my last high level Godot tips video, I kind of glossed over nodes. In this video, I want to take a deeper dive into nodes and I also want to try to talk a little bit more about how you might access a particular node in code. I know in Unity, something like get object was fairly common, but that's not always the way you want to do things in Godot and oftentimes there are better ways to get to the particular node you need to get to. And so, I just want to kind of go over some of those options. This is our kind of root node of the scene for this particular example player scene. And so this is a character body 2D, which we'll look at the script for in a moment. But under it, you'll notice there's kind of these direct lines and out, you know, kind of goes down and out, down and out, down and out. And they're all directly connected to the example player. If I take this collision shape today and I drag it up to be connected to the sprite, you'll notice that it goes down from the sprite. It is now a child of the sprite. There are situations where you will want to have something specifically be a child of another node, but most often you're going to see your scenes look a lot like this, where you have all of the, all of the actual nodes for the scene, uh, that specific scene rather, direct children of the parent node. The reason I want to point this out, so if I click on the sprite here and I move this, whoop, I, uh, I dropped the wrong one, so let me uh, undo that. So one trick is if you have, like everything right now is here on this origin point. So like the collision object isn't filled in, but the camera, the sprite, and the example player all have an origin of zero, zero. If I click on the sprite, I hold down the Alt key. That'll make sure that I just grab that sprite. And now I can go over here and you can see the camera is still here. That's that little plus right there. And then you can see the example player is still here. And let me zoom in just a little bit more on this. So now you can see I, up in the corner, it's still there, but the sprite is moved down here. So what does that actually mean for you though? So if I go and I actually move this origin point for the player, you'll notice the sprite moves with it. This is just like you would see in Unity, where that parent node is going to be a, a relative position for everything else. If I hold down control, I, instead of moving, I can rotate, change the angle. So you'll notice that the ball is moving just because of how I am changing the angle of the origin point. So that's something really important to keep in mind. And especially when you start having something else be the parent beyond the, you know, the beyond this uh, root node, that's where you really got to watch out for that because you'll have, you know, a relative position off of the parent, which has a relative position off of the root. So that's, that's just something to keep in mind and uh, just to watch out for. So another thing that I really wanted to point out here, because I had a couple questions for people asking how to do something and I've seen discussion on how to do various things compared to how they would do them in Unity. And one thing that I would want to point, I want to point out, and I kind of touched on this, but I, I didn't go into very much detail. In Godot, it really prefers you use something like composition. All right, so I'm back in my game jam project. So you'll notice here we have the player and then we have the hitbox, the hurtbox, and that is the way and I, I, again, I kind of touched on this, but I just wanted to drill this home. This is generally the way they prefer you cr to create a more complex setup in Godot. So up here, the player node is again a character body 2D. All of the nodes under it are a child of that root node. Even all these timers, the, uh, the jumping sound, all of these. Once I actually get down to this hitbox and this hurtbox, these are entirely different scenes. And this is the way Godot tends to prefer that you work. And anything in this scene, I can access directly just simply by pressing the control key, clicking on the particular node and dragging it over. And if I bring it into the editor here, you'll notice I had an on ready var animated sprite 2D, animated sprite 2D as the type, and then equals animated sprite 2D. And that's, that, is, that is a direct reference to this over here. And so I don't have to go out to the editor or I don't have to go over to the editor here and, and say, oh, I need, to, I need to make sure that this animated sprite is this animated sprite. I don't have to do that. Anything directly within this scene, I can grab just like that. All right, 
so we're back in my, my prototype here. So let's say that I wanted to call something that wasn't necessarily in this scene. So if I go to this node 2D, this is kind of my world scene. And you, if I scroll down here, you'll notice I do a call get tree dot call group ball group and then start ball. So what this is doing is this, this get tree is ultimately where it's trying to get this tree, that is the scene tree, I believe, and it's gonna call a group, specifically ball group, which I only have one particular node in the ball group, and that is the ball. I will show you that in just a second. And then start ball. And so if I go over to the ball, and I click on ball here, and I go over to node, and over to groups, you'll notice I have it under ball group. I plan to basically redo this entire thing right now, but this was me just working on getting things to work. So anyway, the ball is in the ball group. And what it's actually gonna do then is after that, it's going to come down and it's going to run the start ball script or the stop ball script, depending on which of these calls are made. It's as simple as that. I don't have to worry about, again, going in the editor or doing a, a get a get node specific or a, a get object here. Another way you can do this is you can say var new get node, and then you can have the path to that particular node. And so if I, this would be getting the player node, which is this scene right here, and it would be grabbing this. I mean, you can do this. But honestly, I don't really find a need to do this very often. I don't know that I've... Off the top of my head, I, I think this is one of the first times I've actually used Git Node specifically to show this off. So I tend not to find very many reasons to actually use this. I feel like most of the time there's generally a better, better way to do it, either via composition or signals or something else. And speaking of something else, let's take a look at a singleton here that I've created. So this singleton is really simple. All I have is var ball, the type is ball. I had the ball, the class name is ball, capital ball. Uh, and then null, that's all it is. So if I go over to the ball itself, I have a function enter tree singleton dot ball equals self. And that's assigning this node to that singleton.ball. So now if I need to add, access the ball from anywhere else, I can say singleton.ball and that will give me, uh, and then equal it to ball and that will give me the access to the ball from another scene. Again, a lot of times this is more for things like, you know, updating how, or maybe, maybe you wanna access the player, you know, and wanna be able to call like an update health or something like that. Um, from the world. That might be a way, a reason to do this. Enter tree is essentially saying when this scene is instance. So when this, you know, when this scene is started or instance into the tree, that's when this actually activates. And then slightly after that, ready comes up. So I guess the closest thing again is awake for this uh, in Unity. So another thing I wanted to mention is that there are times where the function you're working with will actually give you other objects. So this collision object here is going to equal move and collide. And move and collide, whenever you collide with something, will actually give you the object you collided with. So this if collision object here is just saying if we have a collision object. Um, this is a lot of what I have to clean up because this is where I was playing around trying to make sure I understood exactly what was happening. But yeah, uh, you know, this is where I'm saying velocity bounce is an object and then get normal. So ultimately this is making the ball bounce off the paddles or bricks or whatever. So, and then down here, that's another thing where again, I'm getting the actual object I collided with, with get collider. And so I can do pretty much anything that I need to do from there. So again, I that was a question that came up and I, I thought about it and I'm like, well, I just don't know that you always have to quite access things the same way as you would in something like Unity. So I just wanted to kind of point this out. And like I say, adjusting to the way Godot does things and kind of using more of the composition style to kind of nest scenes together and taking advantage of some of the ways you can directly access a node or using some of the other methods that are available to you, 
is going to ultimately get you a lot more success. Trying to do things the same way you were doing them in Unity can make this a lot more difficult to accomplish the task you're trying to do. If you haven't seen the first high level tips video, I would encourage you to check it out. You can do that right here. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day and I will see you next time.